What is going on? You and the two. It's your boy Truck Will. I'm trucking it like always. I'm trying to make this money. I'm trying to make this dough. And we out here in New York. It's not as bad as what everybody else is saying. But I'm not in the city. I'm in the up, I'm up, I'm upstate. So we're gonna show you what driving, trucking during this pandemic out here on the freeways, what it looks like. It's kind of desolate. We're gonna talk about it next. A trucking, a trucking world. All right, guys, but before I get into that, I wanted to get your opinion on something. So, I was having a conversation with my wife uh, this morning, and she's been following this, this stuff very closely. And she basically was telling me that she feels like I should come home. Now, I've been doing my TNT training uh, with my student, aka my son. Uh, we've been running, for the most part, okay. Uh, but there has been a, a, a slack in loads, uh, for the exception of being stuck in uh, Florida for two days. Then we went out to California. Uh, from California, we went up to Oregon, dropped the load up in Oregon, then deadheaded like almost 600 miles. It was like 400, 450 to 600 miles down to Idaho. That load was held up. I called originally to see if it was ready. They told me it was. I got there, it wasn't ready. Uh, then we proceeded to try to go get some food uh, and go to Walmart. Uh, Walmart was closed. They closed. All Walmarts are closing at like eight o'clock, if you guys weren't aware of that. Uh, we went over to uh, Panda Express. The uh, Panda Express was closed on the inside. Shout out to Panda Express because uh, in uh, up there um, because they let us they let us come in and order. We we're like they're like you can use your drive through, and we were like we're a truck, and they're like oh well come on in. So shout out to Panda Express for showing some truck drivers some love uh, during this time when we're trying to get we're trying to put some food in our stomachs. Um, so we did that, got our load at like one o'clock in the morning. Uh, my student took off, he started driving, uh, rocked it out. Then we got halfway there. I loaded that I was gonna have to do a 34 hour reset, so I did my 34 hour reset. Um, ended today, so I was able to drive. Um, so we sat for 10 hours in Iowa 80 uh, yesterday and uh, got some got some rims on the truck now. The truck's looking kind of nice. Uh, then left out and now uh, we're about 160 some odd miles from our 90. So some of the footage is just going to be of the road, um, primarily going to be of the road and just how desolate it is on the roads here. Um, Pennsylvania into New York, uh, upstate New York. Um, I'm not sure what type of load I'm gonna get, what type of load we're gonna get out of here uh, because I keep getting messages saying that uh, trailers are not being unloaded by shippers or receivers um, and that they're having a hard time finding empties for other drivers so you may sit on it and for me being a lease operator, it can be kind of frustrating and looks like it's going to be kind of frustrating because I dropped this load. It's now Sunday. Still got Sunday, Monday, uh, or Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday to get another load. But I don't know if they're going to have another load for me to scoop up that has team miles on it so we can put some more money on the, on the truck. That goes back to what my wife was saying to me because she felt that um, that putting our life on the line and we're doing a lot of sitting. And I, and I mean, I understand the putting life on the line because we're doing a lot of sitting. Um, 
and we're not sure. It's just, you know, I felt like it was a, you know, it's a responsibility, you know, the job that I'm in, what I'm doing, it's essential. But she's just, you know, telling me what she was feeling and what she, you know, what she thought. And it's just like, there's not a whole lot of difference between what I'm doing and what the people on the front lines are doing. The only difference is that they're directly directing with the people out here. And I'm part of the millions and millions of drivers that are bringing stuff to people so that they can eat, so that they can have their supplies. You know, it doesn't matter what I'm hauling, doesn't matter what I'm carrying, I'm still part of something way huger than myself. And she understood it, but she just feels like, you know, we're doing a lot of sitting, are we really making money? And now I can say that, guys, that the Prime has been keeping us moving, uh, but the revenue that I did to the truck last week is pretty much a solo. I could do it solo. Um, so, you know, our fleet managers are doing their, their best job to keep us running, keep us moving, keep us with revenue on pocket so we're not out here not making no money um but i know that they have an extremely hard job as well as we have an extremely hard job a lot of them are working from home systems are not working correctly they're slowly because the majority of the time those systems aren't used um so i understand the frustration that they have and then they already understand the frustration that we have out here uh running but uh what do you think guys do you think that I should chalk it up and be like, all right, and head home? Or keep on trucking, keep on keeping the left door closed, right foot down only when it's safe. You know, um, I, I, I look at it, the wheels are not turning, I'm not earning. You know, uh, bills gotta be paid, even though they have all these things, you know, to combat that, to help you with that, still stuff, still things gotta still be taken care of. Perfect time to invest in yourself if you're making money, invest in yourself, try to make that money work for you but there's a sacrifice in it you know and the sacrifice is you know i haven't been home since december um i went home well a home time let me rephrase that i haven't been on home time since december i went home uh, for a day because a load didn't drop until the next day uh but i haven't really been home for a home time since december and now this covid 19 thing hits um my biggest concern is that i got my mother who's in her 60s. I got my mother-in-law who's in her 70s. I got my niece and my nephew, their little one, their oldest one, my son, and um, and then my wife that are all there. So that's my other concern is I don't want to bring in nothing um, from out here to them. So that's something that I, you know, think about, you know, and it's kind of a struggle because you want to go home, but then you're like, I don't want to get them sick. And then it's like, eh, and you, you don't even have to be sick, you know, or have anything going on with you. You just want to be safe. And I'd rather be safe than sorry. And being safe means stays out here, keeps these wheels turning. I mean, I'm, I'm with that. You know, they're talking about August or uh, what is it? August, September, um, where we start putting people back in, in stadiums and stuff like that. But we haven't even reached the peak yet. It's, it's, a, it's a bunch of different things, but it just makes you think. So what I wanted to ask you guys before I let y'all see some of this uh, this footage on this vlog here, do you think that I should either A, uh, pack it up, go home, or B, stick it out, keep on trucking? You let me know, guys, um, in the comments below. Um, remember to like, subscribe, share, hit that bell below so you know when I come out with new videos and you know we're doing that thing out here on the blacktop. Remember to keep the left door closed, right foot down, only one is safe. And like I always say, guys, I will see you on the blocktop. Safe trucking. Take it easy. Later.